Good afternoon, everyone. Just a few reminders. Uh, at Mass, the children will be part of the offertory procession as they offer flowers to the Santo Nino. So please uh, have the children ready uh, a little after, during the universal prayers. Get them ready to line up for the uh, offertory procession for the flower offering. After the Mass, after the final blessing, we will have the procession of enthronement of the Holy Child Jesus from the altar to the place of enthronement. So the order of procession will be uh, the altar servers, altar servers, and then the image of the Holy Child followed by the uh, followed by the uh, by by the ministers. After the ministers, we still invite the children with their parents and those who have the image of the Santo Nino blessed to follow the ministers and you can do the ritual, uh, the ritual uh, Santo Nino dance as we process from the altar to the place of enthronement. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the annual celebration of the Feast of Santo Nino. Our theme, we love Jesus in the children and youth of today. Today is a more special day because of the enshrinement of the infant Jesus here at St. Francis Cathedral. This celebration is so dear to the heart of the Filipino Catholics. This observance brings us back to the beginning of the Christianization of our land but enables us to see the relevance of this devotion to our lives today. In a special manner, it forces us to focus on our children and youth with all the problems they post and hopes for their race. Our main celebrant for this afternoon, Reverend Father Timothy Christie, Rector of St. Francis Cathedral, con-celebrating our Father Jerry Padaron, Father Edgar Madaron, and Father Ray Kisea, assisted by Deacon Roger Ladau and Joey Perlis. Today, we offer this Mass for Thanksgiving for Gift of Life, R.J. Gacheres and Chris Clark. For the healing of the following, Agnes Romulo, Arlene Alana, Jim Kintong, Segunda Tobis Bernabe, Susan Cruz, Cherry Hiloman Santos, and Erminia Ines. And for the deceased, that they may rest in peace, especially Tom Kennedy, Charlene Gutierrez, Ami Madangbayan, Evangeline San Agustin, Ruperto and Crescenciana Tobis, Lorenzo Tobis, Romy Pagatipuanan, Chito Diwatan, Ira Lacson, Alex Manuel, Tessi Bolido, Andy Pons, and Franchosa Castillo. At this time, please silence your cell phones.
Let us all rise and join singing the entrance song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear Father Jerry and Santo Nino devotees, Pit Senor. Pit Senor. On behalf of the Diocese of Metachen, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to you and to all the devotees of the Santo Nino whose image is being enshrined today at our beautiful Cathedral of St. Francis of Assisi in Metachen. I am certainly grateful to the generous donors of this new image and to Father Christi, Rector of the Cathedral of St. Francis of Assisi, for making this happen. The Filipino community is truly a blessing to our diocese. Thanks for all you do. To all the faithful gathered here today, your faith and devotion is truly inspiring and uplifting. Our local church is blessed by your religious practices. My only prayer is that may we always strive to be like our meek and humble Santo Nino, whose only joy is to do his Father's will. May our Blessed Mother, the Virgin of Guadalupe, watch over you and guide you closer to her son, Santo Nino. With renewed best wishes, I remain yours in Christ, Most Reverend James Chacchio, Bishop of Mitachin. It's a joy to welcome all of you uh, to this special celebration, first time at our cathedral to have Santo Nino on this day here and to be able to enshrine this uh, beautiful statue that will remain uh, in our cathedral 
as a, uh, as a perpetual reminder of uh, the gift of the baby Jesus and the uh, joy that he brings to the church and the reminder that he brings to each one of us uh, to be faithful to God in everything. As we prepare to enter into Mass today, let us call to mind God's goodness and love and let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy and for his forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son, begotten from all ages, humbled himself as a child in Nazareth and became subject to Mary and Joseph. Grant that we may learn from his example to embrace your will in all things 
and holding fast to the dignity of all, serve our lowly brothers and sisters with open hands and gentle heart. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who lived in a land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at harvest, as they exult when dividing the spoils. For the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder, the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder, Counselor, God, Hero, Father forever, Prince of Peace, his dominion is vast and forever peaceful. Upon David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains, by judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing to the Lord a new song for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power. has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, 
With a harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. For the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. Therefore, I too, hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love for all the holy ones, do not cease giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones. The word of the Lord. and adore the Lord for today a great light has come upon the earth Alleluia 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called the child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name, receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their, that their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. 
such a joy for me to be able to have the opportunity to celebrate this Mass, a significant Mass, um, in the life of the Filipino community of our diocese, but also significantly here in the life of St. Francis Cathedral. You know, the Cathedral Church is the mother church of the diocese, of any diocese. So this church is the mother church of the Diocese of Metuchen. It is the bishop's church, and he is the, is the rightful pastor here. And the major celebrations of the diocese take place here, and this is where people come for special occasions, ordination, chrism mass, special honors, and things that take place. And so how fitting it is, and how important it is to recognize that a tradition and devotion that is so special and close to you Filipino people is now finding a permanent home here in our cathedral. We mustn't miss that symbolism of why this is important. You know, the, of course we know that the United States is, of America is made up of many different nationalities, many people from many places, immigrants. We are a nation of immigrants. And every immigrant always brings their own particular flavor and spice to the, to the whole mix. And so, properly speaking, you from the Philippines bring a very unique and special gift and flavor to the church uh, in America, but right here in the Diocese of Metuchen, and in all the parishes that you represent. And so, for that reason, I'm grateful. As a priest of the church, recognizing that the church lives because of the faithful people in the church, if we didn't have you faithful people taking up the banner of Christ every day in your lives and seeking to live out his mission, the priests would be very lonely in their church. But because of you and because of what happens in your home and the way that you live the faith and the way that you pass that faith on, it uh, gives vibrancy and new life and new evangelization uh, to the church. So I'm first of all so grateful to, to say that to you and to say what an important occasion it is that uh, Santo Nino will have a permanent place here in our cathedral so that people coming from far and wide, they'll see it and they'll know. And as I mentioned at the uh, Novena prayers this past uh, Thursday when I celebrated them, that uh, there's usually a Filipino not too far away here in the cathedral who could explain why uh, Santo Nino is enshrined here at St. Francis Cathedral. I went deeper into the devotion and to, to, to discover another very significant reason uh, that we could do this now at this particular time. Because I discovered that it was in 1521, and you people know this, uh, this history better than I do, but uh, when the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magella uh, came to the Philippines and there was a evangelization going on of the, the gospel was being preached. And when Queen Juana of Cebu was baptized, Ferdinand Magella gave her a statue of the baby Jesus, Santo Nino, and she danced. And it was an expression of her whole person. You know, it wasn't an intellectual conversion simply, but it was a conversion of her heart, her mind, and her emotions. You know, that's what, you know, something, if, if, if we dance, it's something that it's in our whole being. And it's a way to express ourselves, for the spirit to express ourselves in a kind of joy. And so symbolically, when she accepted that infant Jesus and as she, as she danced with that infant Jesus, in some way she was expressing for all of her people the joy of Christ's coming. And I think in a certain way that has been my experience of getting to know many Filipinos in my own life. I grew up in Nebraska. I, didn't, I, I knew that there was the Philippines, but I never met anyone Filipino until I came to the seminary. And then I met seminarians from there. And they were so, um, they were so um, joyful. And they were so um, uh, kind of like childlike in their faith. Uh, a good friend of mine from the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, Father Efren Esmila, became a good friend of mine. He explained to me so many things about the uh, Filipino culture. 
And then as I became a priest in every parish I went to in the diocese of Metuchen, there was always very faithful, beautiful Filipino people who loved the church, who loved the Blessed Virgin Mary, who, who loved um, priests and were good to priests and always wanted to show up for things and always volunteer for things. Filipino people are a priest's dream, believe me, because, because you come forth and you do things because you love the Lord and you love the church and you want things to happen. And as I got to know the joy of the Filipino people, I also got to know some things about their spirituality, namely the way that you pray in your homes. And that, I think, is something we have to really be grateful for this devotion. You know, the, we can only do so much when we celebrate the rites and the sacraments in church. But unless there is fire in the homes, we cannot bring a big blaze to the church. You see, in a very certain way, the way that the, that the faithful people are protected from the corrosive nature of the culture is by prayer in the homes. And that's one of the things that all these beautiful statues of Santa Nina, they, they represent what people are doing in their homes, which magnifies and, and strengthens what we do here in church. And in a very real way, the, that gift that um, Santa Nina was to Queen Juana, well, it continues to reverberate down to this very day. And as we honor um, this moment of uh, this enshrinement of Santo Nino today, it's a reminder to us to then put into practice the deep spiritual gift that Santo Nino represents. He is the child Jesus. And perhaps there is no more tender expression of God's love than Jesus in the manger, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, the kind of emotion and the love that the baby Jesus evokes in us and the tenderness of God. And that we never should, we never should leave Christmas behind on December 25th. But this devotion is a reminder to us that Christmas has to be a daily living devotion because we can all lose our fervor for God. I don't know what's happening in your lives right now, but I'm sure you have a problem I don't know what it is, but you have one. Maybe you're grieving the loss of a loved one. Maybe you've just gotten a serious diagnosis with your health. Maybe you're facing some kind of financial hardship. Maybe your job is in crises. Maybe you're dealing with an interpersonal family problem. Everybody is, is struggling in a very real way. And of course, we like to put on a happy face for other people and we say, oh, I'm doing fine. But in our heart, we're not always feeling fine, you see. That's why we need the tender love of Jesus. You see, he understands our, our sadnesses and our disappointments and our discouragements. And with the joy that he brings to the world, he can remind us that maybe we're passing through a difficult time but eventually all's gonna be well. He promises us that. And he promises that that will be true if we trust him. Jesus, I trust in you, you know, from the divine mercy. And trusting in Jesus becomes a childlike quality. You see, there are childish children, impatient, um, difficult, but that is not what we're called to imitate, but we're called to imitate the, the humble child who trusts that their mom and dad are gonna take care of them, that, they're, that it's gonna be okay. And you see, if you and I really open our heart to that truth, that everything is gonna be okay, then we become like the gospel passage today. We become like little children and St. Matthew tells us we cannot become like, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless we become like little children. So this celebration today, first of all, must remind us that we've got to have humble trust in God, even in the midst of our difficulties, and that's where we find our joy. And that the love of God is a promise to be with us today in, in this particular time.
And every time we celebrate and, wa and pass this, this statue of the Santo Nino. And finally, I just want to encourage you um, as a community, as, a, uh, as devotees of Santo Nino, that there's much work to be done. You see, we live in a culture that is very aggressive and against everything we want to do to love and to praise God. There's a world that wants us to give up on God. And you see, you as a, as a community of Filipinos who hang on to your faith in this land of opportunity that is America, many of you have raised your children here and many do, and there's many good things here. But, but you must never, never forget that what makes life good and beautiful is not the opportunities of America or living as expats here, but rather by being faithful to the faith that your ancestors gave to you. You are the legacy, 500 years later, of, of that evangelization that went forth. And please God, through our Filipino community today, that there'll be many, many more people who will come to Jesus Christ because of your witness, because of your love, because of the way in which you honor and glorify God, even in the midst of a very dark world. So what a perfect and beautiful opportunity it is for the whole church to be at the Church of Matuchin to welcome Santo Nino, to make this a permanent part of our devotional life here in our cathedral. Every January, we'll celebrate this feast. And we'll be able to, be able to, to proclaim and to preach and to teach the love of the infant Christ. And may many stories of uh, blessings of children and their um, devotion in your homes with these statues, may, may you increase. And may many more people come to discover the love of God through the infant, the Santo Nino, Jesus Christ. Humbled by all that God has given us, we bring our prayers before him. For the, for the church throughout the world, may this Holy Spirit renew her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For state and national leaders, may our God of justice guide them in their efforts toward building a more just society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of courage to put ourselves in the hands of God with the knowledge of God's love for us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering grief from the loss of a loved one, may the child Jesus bring them hope and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community gathered here, may we be given eyes to see the truth of the Incarnation and recognize Jesus at work in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace and spontaneity to be truthful and honest with others and ourselves, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. that our celebration of the Eucharist may bring us renewal in all our commitment to spread the good news in all that we do and say, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may have a warm love for children that all is little and brittle, that we may help them grow as free and responsible persons. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful department, may the blood of Christ cleanse them from all sin and draw them to the heaven, to heaven to worship the living God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear and answer these prayers we bring to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and forgiveness. The praise the Lord. God, our Creator, we offer the gifts of bread and wine to recall the childhood of your only Son. Let our offering become the sacrifice of him who brought forgiveness and peace to the world. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that, raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord in all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Loving Father, you have nourished us at the banquet in honor of the child born of the Virgin. We pray that we may advance in wisdom and grow daily in faith and works of love so that we may find favor in your sight. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this point, we'd like to invite all the children for a special blessing on the Feast of Santo Nino. All the children, if you could please come forward for the blessing. It will be followed by the blessing of uh, uh, the statues of Santo Nino. After the final blessing, we will have the procession from the altar to the place of enthronement. Uh, the order of procession will be uh, will be led by the altar servers, followed by the image of the child Jesus, and then Father Christie and all the ministers of the altar. Uh, we will be followed by the children, if you want to join the procession to uh, the altar of uh, enthronement. And those who have uh, the statues uh, blessed, you can also join the procession uh, while you are dancing to the Pit Senor as we, uh, as we sing the uh, hymn to the Santo Nino. Thank you. So children, you are our greatest blessing, and we, we love you, and you're so, so special uh, to us, but so special to Jesus. And you remind us of who we're supposed to be before God, so we are so grateful to give you this blessing uh, today. Lord our God, out of speech of little children, you have fashioned a hymn of praise. Look with kindness on these children, whom the faith of the church commends to your tender care. Your son, born of the Virgin Mary, gladly welcome little children. He took them in his arms, blessed them, and held them up as an example for all. We pray that you, Father, will also send your blessing on them so that through the model and example of our dear Santo Nino, they may grow in Christian maturity and by the power of the Holy Spirit become Christ's witnesses in the world, spreading and defending our faith. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Now we, we bless these, uh, these sacred images that remind us of the love and the beauty of the infant Christ who brings us close to the heavenly kingdom. Lord our God, we acknowledge your infinite glory and the abundance of your gifts before the foundation of the world. You appointed Christ, the beginning and the end of all things. Heavenly Father, may your children who have provided these statues of Santo Nino know his protection and trace in their hearts the pattern of his holiness. Bless them with faith and hope, love, and humility. Bless them with strength and self-respect in poverty. Bless them with patience in adversity and kind-heartedness in times of plenty. May they search for peace, strive for justice, and realize your love as they pursue their journey through life toward your heavenly city. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated for a short while. You may go back to your seats. Mababait na yung mga bata na bless na They'll be good. Pitch Senor. Kanamo malaoy kaunta na kanimo mangilaba. Pitch Senor means uh, sang Pitch Senor. It's a plead for mercy to the child Jesus. So we thank the Lord for gathering us today as uh, we celebrate the Feast of the Santo Nino and as we witness to yet another blessing to us as a community. Uh, we are so grateful 
uh, to God for sustaining us in our faith. Grateful to Bishop Cecchio for instituting the devotion of the Santo Nino here at the cathedral. We are equally grateful, and in behalf of the Filipino community in the diocese, I am very grateful to Father, to very Reverend Tim Christie for initiating the process of the enshrinement and institution of the devotion to the child Jesus at the Mother Church of the Diocese. Thank you so very much. You see, there are two Christian icons uh, that, we, that was brought to the Philippines uh, 500 years ago, the Cross of Magellan and the image of the Santo Nino. Uh, as we celebrated our 500 years of Christianity, we have that replica of the cross uh, brought to our land. Uh, the sword is long gone, but the cross remains. So we thank God for that grace, and now we have the Santo Nino in our midst, in our mother church here at St. Francis. We are also grateful for uh, Father John Alvarado at uh, Sacred Heart Church in uh, South Plainfield for a long time. She, he guided the devotion of this particular group of the Santo Nino to fruition and to growth. So we are very grateful for his uh, contribution for the growth of this devotion. Also, there are different Santo Nino groups in the diocese. There are three at least big groups of Santo Nino uh, devotees, and would like to thank them and recognize them for their participation in the past three days of our Vespers in Triduum in honor of the Santo Nino. Uh, the devotees of the Santo Nino from Flemington, or Fast Mag, if you are here, please stand to be recognized. Thank you. The devotees from Raritan of St. Anne. St. Anne, Raritan. Thank you. And the devotees of the Greater Middlesex area in Kendall Park. They are big groups, but there are other groups in the diocese celebrating the Santo Nino. And you, those from Sacred Heart, now you are here at, uh, at the St. Francis Cathedral. So thank you for coming also to our celebration today. We'd like to thank all the ministers of the altar and of course our DMFA Festival Choir for always uh, serving in our liturgy. Thank you. And I'd like to thank also and recognize the efforts of the SFCCFA, the Philippine, Filipino community based here at St. Francis Cathedral for your contribution for the realization of this event. Thank you so very much. And a special thanks to Father Jerry Pederon, Director of the DMFA, for coordinating and taking time to help, with, help us with this program. We invite you to pick up a goodie bag at the breezeway and entrance of the church after Mass. Thank you, and may the peace and love of Christ be with us all. I just want to assure all of you that Whatever parish you come and whatever, uh, wherever you pray, that you're always so welcome here. This is the, this is the mother church of our diocese, and it's, it is your spiritual home. And so feel free to be here to worship and to praise God and to know that as we're close to our bishop, we're close to the Holy Father, we're close to the, the communion of the universal church, and close to our loved ones wherever they are in the body of Christ. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
the owners of these statues, if you want to join the procession, please get them. Please face the back of the church. O miraculous Santo Nino, we enshrine and we come before your sacred image, moved by love and hope. We beseech you to look mercifully into our troubled hearts. Let your tender love so alleviate our sufferings Take from us, if it will be your will, in all afflictions, and never let us surrender to despair. Grant us, Senor Santo Nino, the special grace we ask from you today. As we enthrone your image, look with kindness on our humility, and with a loving trust, and for the sake of your sacred infancy, hear always our prayers. Be generous with your aid and consolation that we may praise you and the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Incense. Incense. 